following include some of the artifacts located in the GAR room in the Douglas County Courthouse, Tuscola, Illinois, and may be viewed Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on non-holidays or by appointment. At the dedication of the Douglas County Courthouse in 1914, the meeting room for the Grand Army of the Republic was formally made the meeting place of the GAR and successive Civil War groups. In 2002, the County Board resolved to maintain the room in perpetuity and if a new structure is ever built to duplicate the room in the same area in the new structure.
We want about 10 or 15 men from Douglas County. We would like you to use your influence in our behalf to get large double-fisted fellows that would go a good ways in filling up a ditch. If the boys succeed in getting some recruits, send them down in a wagon or on a walker's line. The health of the regiment is very good. I think we can hold about 50 or 55 men in our company for the long term. Douglas County must and shall be represented in the Army to revenge our insulted country. Better die on the field than have no government. What say you? B.F. Reed. Charlie, it looks hard that I should have to sleep on a blanket on the cold ground, eat hard crackers, fat bacon, set up with the guard night after night. I am on duty at the time as officer of guard. Now 1 o'clock a.m. and not allowed to sleep one minute. At the same time, we have men in Douglas County who are living in the finest style, sleeping in warm beds with good-looking women. As Mr. Douglas would say, living in one of the best governments under the shining sun. What do you suppose I have reference to? Well, such men as Frank Williams, Samuel Williams, Spears Statler, that fellow it was squire over the river, and numbers of others I could name in our county. Oh, such men, and how glad how their spirits would revive if they could hear the defeat of the Union troops once more. Poor fellows, they are doomed to disappoint. How do they look? I see our way clear, but the Union is safe beyond all doubt. We will be victorious in every struggle with the rebels. General McClellan at Washington will hold the rebel Jack Davis in check while we skin the bounce. Please excuse bad handwriting. Yours, B.F. Reed. Rogers Reed, great-grandson of Benjamin Franklin Reed, Douglas County, Illinois. Greenville County, Greenville, Tennessee, East Tennessee, April the 19th, 1863. Dear wife, I take the present opportunity of dropping you a few lines to let you know I am not dead yet. My leg is better, but my arm is very sore. I think the doctor will cure me. I got a letter from sister the other day. That was all. Well, I hope you will write to me. I have got one letter from you. Mr. Morton fetched that. 
I want to hear from you in the worst in the world. I could get to come home. The doctor said he would furlough me, but they passed a law for no more furloughs to be granted till July. But the doctor thinks it will be altogether according to the movements of the armies. He thinks he can let me off some. I sent you some stamps in the other letter. I will send you some pens and pencil. I want you to plant the beans. I put up a long pole for them to grow on. They had grown a yard long. I want you to take good care of my beans and to try to make seed. I have just returned from meeting. Though there was not much preaching, it was an Episcopalian meeting. There was very nice music, but a great deal of formality. I will tell you the balance when I get home, if I ever do get there. I hope I will. I think I will have my amber type, type taken tomorrow if the weather lets me and the gentleman from Halifax. Give my love to all the family, father, mother, and all the rest. I will write to you next time. I have not time now. Direct your letters to East Tennessee, Division No. 5, G.W. Jones. Read by John Jones, great-grandson. Nancy Barnett letters, courtesy of her great-granddaughter, Mrs. K. Curry Kleiss of Tusco, Illinois. Nancy later married her cousin, George Davis Barnett. Following is a letter from a jilted admirer of Nancy's. June 1864. Ms. Barnett. I received your letter bearing the date of May the 28th. After taking the contents into considerations, I thought I would drop you a note. I have never hoped your love in my life, and I always respect you, but your manner towards me in the last eight months has been rather on becoming a lady. My intentions was good towards you. I intended to propose to your, for your hand when I come home. But when I first met you, I saw at once it was useless to think of such a thing, and therefore I abandoned the idea. I think it is not worth my while to go further in this. You say that you don't think I am worthy of your love. I don't know for you that that is the case. So I will bid you adieu forever unless you can explain things more clearly than they are at this present time. P.O. address, Mr. D.C. Baker, Clarksville, Tennessee, Battery H, 2nd Illinois Volunteers. P.S. It is hard, but I think it is goodbye, Farwin. I have on request to make of you, and I hope you will be so kind as to grant it, it. Please send my miniature and my ring to me, and destroy those letters that you receive from me, and I will be very much obliged to you, your obedient servants. D.C. Baker, read by Chuck Knox, Douglas County, Illinois.
forward, march!
From Lincoln's first inaugural address, Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory, stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land, will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. Read by Judge Frank W. Lincoln, retired.